What's up everybody? Spear with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on Space Engineers Programming 101. Uh, when we left off in the last episode, uh, we were working on trying to set up a pressurizing airlock system. And the problem came into play with the doors. Um, the doors were causing an issue in that there's no real good way to detect if a player is actively like opening the door. And we went over that a lot in the last episode. So, um, I tried to come up with a couple of different theories and ways we could do things and so on and so forth and yada 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 yada. Um, but I really was coming up with a blank. My current theory at the moment is a combination of buttons and lights. So what I have here is I've set up a button panel that I've named airlock, but airlock button panel. And then I have two lights called airlock inner and outer light. And they're colored respectively, so inner is green. Like this. Actually, hold on a minute. There's really no reason for music right now. So the, um... The outer, or uh, the, excuse me, the inner door, which, as we talked in the last episode, is this one because this is deemed the rest of the pressurized ship. Is this light, and the outer one is this light. So essentially, it would be like if I'm pushing a button out here to open the outer door, the red light comes on. If I want to open the inner door, the green light comes on. This, what this does is it allows us to basically set the programmable block to be either on a timer or an infinite loop to constantly be checking these lights. And if one of them turns on, it's going to assume you want to open that door. Now, if you were building the airlock, you could put the lights more conveniently, like, you know, on the inside here by this wall or by this wall. You could have multiple button panels, etc, etc. But this is more of a proof of concept that I'm trying to get this to work, then we could m like complicate it further and make it, uh, make it more robust. So first and foremost, I had to figure out what the different functions were to the lights and the buttons. Now the buttons don't have a whole lot of function to them. Luckily, they don't really need one. Um, so the buttons, as you can see on the top, is the that's the top line, is anyone can use on and off is the actions that it has. The lights, on the other hand, have a lot, and that's the toggle, on and off, increase radius, blink interval, length offset. Now one thing that I have not seen is color. I haven't seen a way to adjust the color, which is surprising to me. Um, so what I have set up here is um, I modified the code slightly, so we have a display variable, vent variable, the two doors. Now we have a button panel variable and the inner outer light variable. Um, this is the instantiation, uh, all the way to the outer door is the same. Buttons uses the I my button panel, and you can see our name that we gave it here. Lights use I my interior light, and the airlock inner, airlock outer. Then, this part is uh, roughly ignored at the moment. Uh, all this stuff is really kind of redundant. Um, actually, just to make sure that all this stuff still functions correctly, and that I... Because I removed... Um, let's open this. I removed a... Um, a line in there that has to do with the actions. I took that all out because I found you can just use the apply action command and then string the name in. So once you know the name of the function, you can do it that way, which in our case is open, which toggles the door, which is very important to remember. Okay, so that still functions the way it should. That's good, because we're going to need it. Um, so then, up to this point, didn't really do anything. So right here, um, I started, I collected the actions of the buttons, and, well, no, I made two lists, actually, for button actions and light actions, and then I used buttons and eye light to get the actions and store them, like we did in the last episode. Two strings to store the string data to put it into the screen, and then two loops to get the names 
of the actions, and then a, a line to write it. Now, I also use the, the string um, variables over again to store the detailed info and write it, but you'll notice there's none there, so basically this is redundant and useless. That there isn't apparently any um, any detailed info that you can pull from buttons or lights. Now, the other thing that we could do here is let's put um, a colon and a space and then add in light act i dot value I think it's hard to do without the intelligence of um no no extension method value sama interface could be found there's a way to pull um whether or not it's on or off. Let me pause it a second and look that up. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do here, we're going, we don't really need the button actions and all this. I don't know what I just hit. So we're going to get rid of all of this that has to do with the buttons uh, because it's unnecessary, including this, to clean up our code a little bit. Um, And I don't know if this will work or not. But we're going to try it. Write value. And then I believe we need to specify the block that we are looking for. So I light. We'll just use that one. And then uh, let's see if this will work or not. It takes one... No overload method for write value takes one argument. Okay. So let's then add the string. I think that's the other thing it's looking for. We also need to remove um, this. Okay, write value. My uh, text string builder has some invalid arguments. Cannot convert from string. Okay. Um. That's how we did it before to get the. Let's try a. Uh, let's try the simple is enabled, and we'll put in. I light. Uh, maybe a capital I. Sorry, I'm still. There we go. I'm still trying to finagle. Okay, there we go. Oh wait, no. That's just telling you. If if it's true. Let me let me screw around with this a minute and see if I can find a means to get it to print because I know there's a way that we did it before to get it to print the um, the value of whether or not these are active or not. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I did a couple of things in the interim. I was working on the script a little bit. I forwent the uh, process of trying to write out the values of the actions because I ended up just looking it up on the um, uh, the Googles and found some of the action names and things like that. Um, I think I got this one right. I'm not sure. Uh, the variables pretty much the same that we just went over. Everything is up the same up for this section here to here. I took the uh, displaying the actions out. So what I've got here, and this is a test for the inner door. This is assuming the outer door is open, the inner door is closed, and you want to enter. Um, well, actually, it's... No, I take that back. It's assuming you're on the inside of the ship and you want to go into the airlock, but the outer door is open. So what it's going to do is check if eye light is working. So it's the inner light, the green one, that signals the code that... I want you to um, open the inner door. It ensures the inner door is closed. This is more of just a precaution, if anything, um, just in case somebody accidentally opened the door and then pushed the button or whatever. You'd also have a vacuum going on, but, you know. So if the inner door is open, apply action open to close it. Uh, that is so weird. They need to set that to toggle or something. Get outdoor status, so if... Um, the outer door is open, 
then we close it if if open close the outer door i tried to do a pretty good job of commenting but who knows uh get the pressure this part i changed a little bit so v is equal to the detailed info and v substring 60 should pull the percentage and then if v does not contain the percentage symbol so i changed this a little bit that means that there's no pressure um, no pressure uh, if that's the case we want to pressurize the room um, so vent apply action depressurize should toggle the depressure uh, tag which will then pressurize the room the door's been closed so on and so forth this part i'm not sure about but we're going to try it wait for full pressure what this is going to do is say while v doesn't contain um a hundred percent then because remember we substringed it so it should just be the percentage then we're refreshing the percent v equals vent.detail.substring at 60 that should give us the new percentage while it's pressurizing then it checks it again Theoretically, this should keep running in this section right here until it reaches 100%. At that point, then it can move on. In theory. I don't know if that's going to work or not. Then we open the inner door. If uh, I door is uh, not open, then door action apply. This part, I'm not sure if I got the name right. It's on, off, and then underscore off should turn off the light. It might be off, on. I don't remember. It compiled, so I'm thinking that's the right sentiment but I'm not sure so basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna check for the light to be working which means it's on um, and then you know close the door pressurize the room uh, open the inner door and turn the light back off theoretically we check it it compiles correctly um, I'm gonna run it just to make sure nothing goes wrong in terms of an error or anything uh, but the light's not on, so lights are on and nobody's home. Now what I'm going to do is set this to a one, or one second shut up. I can't talk today. Um, so I'm just going to start that, and it should basically just keep running the script looking for the data. So, or looking for the, the proper configuration. Now what I want to check... Not... Wait a minute. Oh yeah, depressure is on. The vent will remove... Yeah. Okay, that used to be a check mark, didn't it? I think that changed. Alright, so... This right one should be inner, so let's check it, see if it works. Okay. Pressurize the room. It's pressurizing... Why is the door not opening? What's the room pressure like? air vent 100% so the light is also on so it's stuck no this is keep okay okay so this is both good and bad um basically what's happening here um is the time uh, this is my theory anyway Actually, you know what? To test this theory, what we're going to do is set this manually. So this is not the best setup to do this in. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to depressurize the room. Now, okay, that's something I wanted to test too. If this is set to... there. What I want to see is does the tank have to be... because I'm noticing that it's still letting the air out. It's not actually depressurizing. So what I need to see is if the tank has to be set to... Um, where is it? Oxygen tank. There we go. If it has to be set to stockpile for the, the vent to actually pull the air out is what I'm trying to find out here. Because if you'll notice, see the vent is still at 100%. I'm guessing that's because this tank is not being used. Part of that could be from creative mode. Um, 
I don't really know how to fix that, to be honest. Because in creative, it's just going to run. I might... Let me know in the comments um, if you're aware or not whether the tank has to be set to stockpile for the vent to back up into the tank. It is possible that that's... Wait a minute. The vent will remove air from the room and store it in tanks. So if this if the tank is full, it stands to reason that the vent may not be able to store it. Anyways, for this purpose, for now, we're just testing this. But see how it's pulling the air out and not really depressurizing? That's fine. So what we're doing now is we're leaving the light on and we're just going to run this manually to see if the loop is actually causing... I mean, if the timer block is causing the problem. If it is, I may have a fix for that. Um, but I want to make sure that my code is actually running properly. Script execution terminated. Script is too complex. Please edit. What? Check code. Compiles. Okay, that part... So... Can you not do while loops? Or infinite loops? That might be part of the problem. Because that's what's hanging up the code. Is It's getting to this part where it repressurizes the room, but the door won't open because it's waiting for... It gets hung up on that while loop. So... Hmm... Interesting. Interesting. How do we handle something we can't wait for? Um, hmm. Tell you what, I'm gonna look into that and then I'll be back in a second and see if while loops won't work. I know for each loops are having issues on 64-bit systems, but I thought you could do a while loop. But I'll have to check, so give me just a second. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I believe we are on to something. If you will notice, the air vent, 100% pressurized. The outer door, closed. Inner door, open. Light, off. What? So, I found a workaround to our while loop situation. I think that was what's causing the overcomplicated thing. Oh, and by the way, if you're following along with this code, this needs to be open with a capital O. Um, took me like 10 minutes that I had this in place and I thought this was screwing it up because it kept saying something to the effect of something not being instantiated to an instance of an object and I was like, is it something that I did in this one or what's going on? couldn't figure it out and finally I was, I was looking at the code um, and I realized that this one said open with a capital O and the I door ones were all lowercase and I was like um hmm maybe that's a problem so the while loop when it's an infinite loop didn't like it at all but I found a loophole and that's you can do a four with int i equals zero, i is greater than zero, but then no incrementer. And so basically it's not going to enter, uh, increment until we tell it to. So it's always going to be zero, which is not greater than zero, hence it's going to keep repeating. Um, so it's basically just going to keep looping. And I have if it doesn't contain 100%, refresh it, else if it does contain 100%, then i equals one, which will set this to end. Bada bing and we're good. So this is the inner door function. Now, now we get to check the outer door function. And this I might actually write out in here because we have uh, this section to follow along. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I am going to copy this and we're just gonna paste this in and then we're gonna name this outer door. And there's a few other robust things that I want to do for it, but this is just basic setup. So, Olight is working. Ensure uh, outer door is closed. So, if outer door is open, 
um, apply that. So th what this is going to do is, oops, yes, I want to remember the changes. I didn't compile it yet, so that's fine. What this is going to do is in this situation right here, that if you're on the outside and you hit the button to turn this light on, like, hey, I want in, then what it's going to do is close this door, mark this to pressure, depressurize, and then once it's done, open this door. So we're basically reversing the process. Okay. In case that wasn't already clear, that, that way it'll kind of help explain what's going on. So first we want to make sure the outer door is closed. So if you hit the button and the outer door is open, again, why that would happen, no idea, but just in case. Uh, it should close it. Now we're going to change this to inner door. So we'll set this to eye door. So if open, close... I'm trying to change my comments as we go to so that it sets up correctly. Again, we're going to get the pressure. However, we're going to take this off. So if it contains a percentage... If... Um, pressurized... I think, I think that's how you spell it, yeah. Then we want to depressurize room, which is basically the same action, but for comment purposes. Um, wait for no pressure. So we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to flip this. So if it contains any pressure, which is a percentage, then we're just going to refresh it. Else, if it does not contain the percentage then the pressure is zero, and we can um, open the room up. And so, what we're going to do is then open the outer door after that happens. And this may not work immediately, but I have a theory on how we can make it work. And then if outer door is not open, we're going to set the outer door to open. Turn off the outer light and we should be good to go. So, one thing that may happen here is that if we... Did I run the script? I think I ran it. Oh, wait, no, I have to turn the light on first. So the light's on, lights are on, and nobody's home. So when we... Oh, I can do it right from here, actually. Um, trying to get a good view. Um, programmable block. Run. Okay, that all happens a little too fast. Um, hmm. It does work, theoretically. But it happens a little fast. See, I'm not entirely sure this is working perfectly the way we want it to. I think it's opening them at the same time. Maybe. Oh, I'm an idiot. I could just set this up to run the script. So button three is going to be run. That would make things easier, wouldn't it? And where's the button? There it is. So it seems to be opening them and depressurizing at the same time. Which isn't ideal. I was hoping it would, like, Again, though, this is something that I'm not sure how the game determines things. Like, if I do this, is it technically already depressurized kind of thing? Or is that just all flowing out of the room kind of thing? Um, and then if I mark this... You know what I mean? Like, uh, I'm not really sure if that's working. I, without being in a survival environment, I'm not entirely positive it's working correctly. Um, but it is kind of working. Now the trick, there is a trick here, and it's something I might try. 
Um, the, the biggest issue we're going to run into here is a timer block is going to reset the script. It's going to keep running and running and running and running instead of letting it complete its cycle. So that poses a problem. And the only way that I know to fix it is to have this constantly running. And what do I mean by that? I mean basically we're going to fit this whole main loop into a um, an infinite loop like this. Um, so to do that, we're going to have to test this a little bit. And I'm going to give ourselves some space here to type it out. So we're going to do four uh, int... What do we want to call this? Um, let's call it inf loop equals zero. Inf loop is greater than zero, and then no incrementer. And we're going to put. Oops. Why did it do that? It's weird. We're going to put the brackets there, and then we're going to come down here and. Um, let's say, oh, well, first of all, we're going to need to place a bracket there. Well, hold on, hold on. No, actually, this won't work uh, because of how it does things. So let's put brackets here. And we're going to cut this, and we're going to move it to... Let's see, we don't actually need to declare the variables and everything every time. So let's put it here under the main code. Alright, so infinite loop. What I will do do is let's see try to think if there's a way to check um, the text on the screen that would be an interesting way to do it um, tell you what let's do a third light how's that We'll do I my interior light, um, and we'll call this loop light. And yes, I want to remember that. Now, what I want to do is put. Can I put it here? No. Let's put it right there. And for this one. Oh, and by the way. Just for safety pro precautions, um, I set this to me. The lights don't have a a me thing, but uh, we'll set this to loop light and let's put this to yellow for reasons. Okay, and then we'll set this instead of run to loop light toggle on and off. So that way we can turn this on and off. So at the moment I want it on because what we're gonna do is say loop light equals I my interior whoop spelling light grid terminal system dot get block with name loop light this is a crude workaround um, I'm not really sure it's the best way to do it but for just testing purposes it's the only way I can think of to check this so if um, loop light dot is it capital it is is working so this is basically the end of all the loops, or of, of the entire main function. Uh, we'll say if loop light is working, then uh, inf loop equals zero. 
else. And I'm doing an else if just for being very specific so that we don't have any errors. So if loop light is not working, and you might not have noticed it, but I did put a little um, exclamation point right there so for the not. And then we'll do inf loop equals one. Let's see if it will run that. Now, theoretically, if this is working, um, let me go ahead and assign run to this part. If this works, theoretically, then the um, program block is continuing to run. So let's find out. We want to open the outer door. Maybe. Maybe. Let's see if there's an error that might have bugged out. Oops. Something didn't something didn't like that. What happened? Um, let's see. Did I get everything right? Loop light. Loop light. Interior light grid terminal says we got a block with the name loop light, which is what we called it for INT. Uh, how is this one set up? Maybe I didn't do it right. Because sometimes with the way this works, um, the context is like really picky. If loop equals zero. loop is greater than zero. That's kind of how I had this set up, and it worked. So, is that what I named it? Yeah, named it loop light. Loop light is working. In loop, which is this, equals zero. Else if, which is how you do that isn't working and flip equals one. So theoretically it should just continue to run. But it's not actually even closing the door. So it's not getting to that point. For some reason it's not it's not even reaching this outer door code. Um I'm wondering if I've got my bracket screwed up or something. We've got one pair here and then one pair here. Bracket, bracket there, bracket. So that works. Um, no, it should be working. How about this? Let's let's trim this up and make it a little less complicated. So if loop light is not working, we'll say inf loop equals one. Maybe the reassigning it all the time is getting it confused. No? It still isn't liking that. What if we turn this off and then run it? Nope. This is strange because it's running. Like it's functioning. It's not giving us an error. But it's not getting to the point that it needs to get to for some reason. And I don't know why. Because I didn't use I or anything. I didn't use any other variables that could get confused. Did all that right. Um, let me check. Loop light. Yeah. That's it. Hmm. Here's here's one way we, you can do things too. If and if you haven't uh, tried debugging before, um, let's do. When it, oops. When it gets to like the right screen part, right? Let's do display dot write public text. Um, inf loop to string false. 
Um, actually, there's nothing on the screen, so let's write true so that it'll keep appending. Oh, what the? Has some invalid targets, write public text. String bool. What? Oh, uh huh. It's a method, it needs brackets. Okay, see, it's not reaching that point. Now what we can do here is we can actually cut this and then we can put it anywhere in the code to basically see if it gets to that point. So it's not even getting there. That's interesting. Hmm, okay. So... Wow, that's really weird. That is really, really weird. Um... Hmm. Hmm. Just to make sure that I'm not losing my mind, we're gonna cut all this out. And make sure... that it will actually run. Yep. That part works. Oops. Okay. So, basically, we still have to resolve two things that I'm seeing with the code. I'm happy where it's going. It's working. We do have a semi-functioning airlock system now. We've got it to where um, if you turn the light on and then the script's running, the outer door will open. It'll depressurize the room. Now, it's not happening in the same timing there's no pausing which I would like it to do I really was hoping that that um, loop would pause here's something that I kind of want to try is now it's set to depressurize so we need to open the inner door um, where is this part? Okay, so what I want to try is if we turn this off, and it still compiles, remember and exit, what I want to see is now, if we turn this on, and we try and open it, will it get hung up because the pressure never happens? Okay, see, the door opens. That's a problem. That's a big problem. That this door closes, but this one opens. That is not good. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think I might have a solution for that. And just to make sure that we fix things, uh, let's pressurize the room again so that it's not out of sync. Um, my solution for that is that we may we may want to actually turn the door off. Um, so for instance, we want to open the door, the outer door now. So we're going to be in this code. So let's ensure the outer door is closed. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to add brackets to this. Um, and just for testing, I hate doing this in code, but I'm going to do some inline stuff. Because uh, you can actually do this. Um, I don't know if you can actually set this, to be honest. Or wait, no, it's uh, apply action on off off. I think that's the standard... Okay, so theoretically, as long as you have a semicolon, you can do this in the same line. I just hate doing it. Such It looks so bad in your code, but I'm doing it just to see if this works. So we're turning, we're closing the door and then turning the door off. Then if this door is open, we're going to close the inner door. So this one is off. It should already be closed, but it's going to be turned off. So then we do this contains this, blah, 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 blah. Um, 
Now, if this is not open, we're going to kind of do the same thing here and do... Actually... Yeah, I probably should do it this way. Um, we're going to have to turn it on first. I don't know if this will actually slow it down or not, but we'll try it and see if it actually works. Um, theoretically, if this were to work... Um, I don't know. Now that I'm thinking about it, we're putting it in the same question line, so it might just do the same thing and not do anything. Let's find out. Yeah, it really doesn't. As fast as computers work, it just doesn't really do anything. Okay, so that's the two big problems that we've got going on here, is this loop doesn't seem to actually be holding it in place like I wanted it to. Um, also, we can get rid of this, because that just looks trashy. There we go. So, I think we're going to have to wrap this up So Up here, it's not entirely finished, but it is somewhat functional. At the moment, the biggest problem is it's going to waste a little bit of air while the two doors switch off. Um, you could activate a timer. That's a, one solution, is instead of the loop, uh, we could gauge how long it takes the pressure to happen. Like, for instance, if we want to open the outer door, we can go one, two, three, four, right? So we could set the timer to do the opening and closing or turn on the, sh the doors by themselves. Actually, that might not be a bad idea, but there's no real good way to toggle it in terms of turn this door on, turn that door on. So it, it can get overly complex by, by adding things like that. So the biggest problems that we've got going on here is the time that these doors are opening at the same time instead of waiting for the pressure to happen. And also we've got a problem with... Uh, what was the other problem? The other problem was whether or not the... Um, the tank had to go into refill mode for this to work in survival type of thing. Um, but it is getting functional. And then the third biggest problem is just keeping it listening for an event the whole time. Like, just always look for these two lights to be on. Um, so, yeah. There's there's a couple ways you could do it, but it's like I said, it's, it's complicated in terms of... You could have a second programmable block that is basically just for if one of these lights is on, run this script. And then the timer just cycles that programmable block every second and it looks for... But then you have to have a second block and it just makes things complicated. So I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. There are solutions. Um, it's just how complicated do the solutions become. Um, the always listening part easy fix by adding a second programmable block, have a timer block, cycle it, have it let the other programmable block run. Simple. The doors, probably fixable with a timer, um, but I don't know how you would toggle what its actions are. Again, doable, time consuming, um, and complicated. So, those are the three issues we face with the remainder of this airlock script. It's the um, the listening for the buttons to be or the lights to come on, the delaying the doors to be open, and making sure the air actually goes into the tank. But overall, it's actually functioning now, sort of. So it's progress. We're getting there. So let me know what you guys think. In the meantime, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.